Today we are going to set up our home office and go over some of the basics that you can do with the AGK software. To set up the home office to talk to our other locations, we will need to download the Google Drive or OneDrive. So select one of those from our PDF. I will choose the Google Drive. Once we run the download, we can click Get Started and we will have to enter in our Gmail account. Then we hit Next and we put the password for our Gmail and you can click next through the rest of this and hit done. Make sure you set up your Google Drive like we just did on all your back office computers as well. Making sure you log in with the same Gmail account on each. Now you should see your Google Drive folder on your computer. It can be found in File Explorer in this list. This folder is linked to your Google Drive and anything removed or added to your drive will be seen across all your computers. So to add our location folders, we simply right click and say new folder and name it our store name. And we should make a separate folder for each of our locations that we are running the AGKsoft back office. Next, we're going to set up our Google Drive to start when our computer turns on. So type in startup and select see which process start up automatically. You can get here by doing control alt delete as well and go into the task manager startup tab. So make sure that the status is set to enabled. If it's not you have to click on the enabled button down here at the bottom. Now that we're in the software uh, we're going to go to the first time user down here and this can be found on page three of the document for the home office. Uh, make sure that home office is selected and we're going to go to setup locations. Now we're going to make sure that our locations that we add have the same naming convention that we named our folders. So my first location was Superstore. And we can hit save. And we can hit new again. My other location I simply named location number two and we can hit save. Now you'll have to come back here later uh, when you go to your back office in order to see uh, your ID number. This is the ID for Superstore and location right. two's ID is number two. So we'll have to just simply match those up uh, later on. The next thing we're gonna do is map our folders to the folders we just created. So we're gonna go to cash register interface and we're going to click auto and now you can see our our two stores that we just added are in here now from the auto window we're going to hit add folder we'll do location number one first we can hit ok and we're going to click the google drive or OneDrive button up at the top this will take us to that folder and those are the folders that we just created earlier so we'll double click on Superstore for number one, hit OK, and now we have that folder mapped. We'll do the same exact thing for Location 2. Click Google Drive, Location 2, OK. The Home Office is ready to download any files that are put into these folders now. But first we need to set up the back office. Alright, we're at the back office location now. So we're going to go to location at the top. This is my Superstore location. And the default is one, so this one's all set. But for my location two, I'm gonna have to change the location ID in this section. All right, I just went over to my second store now, and we're gonna go back up to location. You can see I have different info now, but the location ID still shows one. So for this one, we're going to erase the number one and put that location ID that we saw when we created the folders at our home office location. Now to set up the export and import at the back office. We're going to go to cash register interface and then we're going to go to automation. Now from this window we will click export. We're going to check all sales data and click the dot dot dot. From here, we can simply click the Google Drive and select our location. So I'm still at location two. I can do this one right now. Hit OK. 
and the IP address doesn't need to be anything. If I hit test connection, it's going to show me my folder one more time. I can hit OK. I get an all test passed. If you hover over the checkboxes for each export section, once you check them, it'll tell you a brief clip about what it'll export. So export sales data for the selected date range. The date range is found right here. So usually we set it to uh, this day or week uh, to export. If you want to export a whole previous month, you can do that as well and so on. The setup here exports the product lists, uh, all your vendor names and the export the expense types to the home office. And the price book would export the departments and the PLUs, UPC codes and mix and match. So these don't have to be checked off if you don't want them, uh, but the all sales data uh, should always be checked. For importing, this will be importing into the back office from the home office. So if we check this off, you can send uh, price book changes from your home office to the back office and go through the same thing here. I'm going to say no to use Google Drive and we can use the same settings as my export. This keep department tax section, when importing the products from the home office, we will keep the department's tax. And that's pretty much it for this side. All we'd have to do is hit start automation. And you'll see this export step here once you start the, the automation. Make sure you wait till it finishes all the steps here. And then we can head over to the home office to import what we've just exported. In order to import the data that we just sent to the home office, we're going to go back to our home office now, click on the auto button, and start the auto import. You will see this importing from location 2. This is going to be that daily file that we sent. Okay, once it's done, it'll say import finished. And if we want to look at the sales data for that store, we can click location 2. And then we can go to end of shift short over. And we can see the days that we imported. So those are the steps to set up the home office. Basically, all you have to do from this point on is make sure your automation is running at your back office and the home office. And all your information will come automatically all the time. Now let's talk about some of the features you can use to control your price book from your home office. The main being the product wizard. So just like at your back office, when sending to the register, you can make many changes from here. Like, let's say, adding 11 cents to all of your cigarettes. So we can select our department and hit find. And we get all our cigarettes in here. And if we want to change the price, we go to our change field, number three, select selling, and we type in plus 11 cents. So now you can see it added 11, we hit save and send to back office. Now if I hit send to back office, it asks if I want to upload all the listed products. If I select no, it'll upload the selected products only. So if you select a couple from the list, you can hit no and just send those, or yes, and it'll send your whole list that's uh, showing right now. Now if I don't have uh, a store selected, it'll ask me here, and that's it. If I select the store inside the cash register interface, uh, it'll automatically trigger to go to that store that's ha that I have selected as my active location. We can also set up zones, so if we have a lot of locations, we can go to set up zones down here. And we can add uh, two or more locations to be in a designated zone that we're sending. So let's go ahead and hit new zone. And we hit add location. And I'm going to make my first zone to include one and two. I can make a second zone. And my second zone is going to be three and four. So now just like selecting your location from here, you can have uh, an entire zone selected. So if I select my zone one, now I'm interacting with Fast Stop and Quick Mart. Okay, so we hit OK. And now when I go to the product wizard, we can try something a little different. I can search by product name. So just by typing in part of the name, you can see that 
it'll bring up all the items that have any of that description inside that name. And now if I want to change the price here, I can drop this by 30 cents, save and send. Export to selected zone, I'll hit yes. So now it's sent it to both those locations. Setting up your categories and price groups is a very easy and fast way in order to um, search for your items uh, very specifically. We have an auto create feature here for the cigarette department. So we can make these categories for your cigarettes uh, instantly. And if we go to product wizard, I can search for my category now. And then we can have a subcategory as well. So these two sections here allows you to search for any of these criteria. Uh, you can search by anything you see in either of these sections just by checking the boxes. So feel free to play around and you simply click find at the top when you are happy with your search. Just make sure to clear out your search before you go to search for a different item. If you need to create a new item from the home office, you can do that from the create modify screen. And this is the best way to search for a single item if you know the UPC code. And once you type it in, you can hit enter. And chances are we'll have the product in our list of product names. Then all you have to do is select a department and put a selling price. And then you hit save and you can send it to the back office. Mix and Match is also great to send discounts to your back office location for promotions on items. So make sure to watch that demo to learn how to use those as well. The last thing I'm going to cover is the overrides function. So the setup override button over here, if we click that, this allows you to make sure specific items are always a lower or higher price at your specific stores. So we can simply hit new to name our first override and you can name it anything you want. Then we hit new and we select our location for our override to be present at. It'll ask us if it's a percentage that we wanna go by. If we hit no, it'll be a direct amount. So we could put minus 50 cents. So what this means is that any items that I'm about to select here, whenever I send those prices to this store, it'll be 50 cents lower compared to the other prices. And you can select items in here by holding shift and clicking. You can also select by holding down control and you can deselect by clicking with control as well. And then you hit okay. So this is helpful if you plan on sending to all your locations at once and you know that you want your cigarettes to be 50 cents off at your speedy shop. Whatever you change the price to, you'll, you'll be guaranteed a, uh, a 50 cents discount at that store now. And you can, you can make as many of these as you want uh, to have a higher price, lower price, or a different percentage for that particular store. One last thing is to not forget to run your automation. Can't stress it enough that if this isn't running, then you might not get your information from your back offices. Um, so leave that running if you plan on leaving your computer. Thank you for watching, and if you have any more questions, just give us a call.